the designation. I feel good about that. Yeah, that's what I've been uh, using as my keyword lately. Right. That's all I can say, except for the horse manure <laughs> in the stable. Very good. Very, I like wordplay. Wordplay always works for me, for sure. Um, all right, so we're going to get started in just a moment. It's so beautiful out. I'm I celebrating. Know. I'm sitting on my porch and... <laughs> Well, that's the, I mean, that's the best of it, right? That's Shabbat the on the porch. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you hear a sound in the background, it's just something printing, don't worry. And uh, for those of our, our friends who are now watching on the stream, Shabbat Shalom, it's great to see you. And, uh, this evening, actually, we're very lucky that we have Cantor Lauren with us, and she's not just anywhere, she's in. Cantor, you want to tell us where you are? I'm in Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas, oh! ladies and gentlemen. Okay. The world that we live in now, where our cantor, our beloved cantor, could be all the way in the deep south and still with us for Shabbat. That's pretty remarkable. And and why are you in Dallas, Texas, of all places? I'm meeting Aaron's family for the first time. Oh, so, exactly. That itself is pretty oh, I love that. Say hi myself. to my daughter. Whoa. Good. All right. I'm just going to wish everybody Shabbat Shalom and mute everybody. Okay. So forgive me. We're going to mute everybody. There we go. And I see Nancy Karlbach is here with us. And in a moment, she's going to uh, to bless and light our Shabbat candles. Uh, and, you know, just before we do, um, I will speak at greater length uh, towards the end of the service about what's going on in Israel. But I think, obviously, that all of us are are coming into services this this particular Shabbat with a very heavy heart and, um, and a lot of very complicated emotions, a lot of complicated feelings. And so I think, you know, one of the beauties of a congregation like ours and a community like ours is that we get to, to think together, right? To pray together, to, to ground ourselves in our tradition together. And I think it's, it's something for me right now, I think it's gonna help me process. So I, I apologize in advance that I, we're gonna be thinking out loud together a little bit tonight, but, you know, I think um, I've really been walking around with a pretty heavy art this week. So being here with all of you means a lot. So before I start crying, we're going to turn it over to our wonderful Nancy Karlbach, who is going to uh, light and bless our Shabbat candles. And Nancy, you just have to hit the unmute button there. It should ask you to unmute. And hopefully we can hear you. Let's see, uh, not yet. Keep trying, uh, Nancy. Um, I unmuted. Ah, there you go. Oh, no. OK. No. Good. OK. So I will light the candles. Can you see the candles? Perfect. Let me get. Baruch Atah Adonai, Rechenu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu B'Mitzvato, V'Tzivanu Le'ad Lichner Shel Shabbat. Amen. Amen, Nancy. Thank you so much. Please give Craig a big hug for me and tell him I think it's Thank the you. best draft the Giants have had in years. Nobody else will <laughs> understand that, but me and, me and Craig are long-suffering <laughs> Giants fans. All right, Nancy, Shabbat Shalom to you. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> okay, and Cantor Lauren, I think we're going to get started uh, with Yadid Nefesh this week, or you you tell me. I think we may change a few of the melodies, so we'll, we'll take your lead on that. Yedi nefesh of Harachamon, Yedi nefesh of Harachamon, Meshochavecha, El Retsonecha, Turn now to page 130 as we begin Kabbalah Shabbat together with Psalm 95 at the top of the page. Lechu neran nalado nai nari alitzori shenu nekan mafanav bet 
Bismirot nari alo ne kan ma fanaf betoda bismirot nari alo We'll turn now to page 131 Shira Ladonai in the middle of the page Shir Hadash, Shiru Ladunai, Kola Aretz, Shiru Ladunai, Barehu Shemo, Pasumi Omeo, Mishuato, Sapu Magoim Kebano, Behul Hamim Niplata, Kigadol Adonai, Umehul Almehod, Nora Hual Kol Elohim, Kikol Elohim. We now turn to page 132 at the very bottom, or Zarua. Or Zarua la tzadik, ule yishre lev simcha. Or Zarua la tzadik, ule yishre lev simcha. Simchut tzadikim manonai, mehondu lezecher kocho. Simchut tzadikim manonai, mehondu lezecher kocho. And now we'll turn to page 134, Zamru Ladonai, the very top of the page. Zamru Ladonai Bechinor Bechinor Bekol Zimra Zamru Ladonai Bechinor Bechinor Vekol Zimra Zamru Ladonai Bechinor Bechinor Vekol Zimra Zamru Now to page 135, Romamu, it's the last Hebrew paragraph in the middle of the page. Romamu Adonai Eloheinu veishtachavu lehar kocho. Romamu Adonai Eloheinu veishtachavu lehar kocho. Ki, ki, ki kadosh Adonai Eloheinu Romamu. The hard cocho, from the moo, I don't know. Hello, hey, do they 
And I will turn to Lechado D on page 138. And a reminder, we're going to do the first, second, fifth, and ninth paragraphs. Lechado D likrat kala Pene Shabbat nekabela Lechado D likrat kala Pene Shabbat nekabela Shabbat, Tov le 
לשמך עליון, ולטמא לשמך עליון. צדיק אתה מנפרח, כארץ בלבנון יזכה, שתולים מבית אדוני, וחצרות אלוהינו יפריחו. עוד ינו משיבה, דשנים ורעננים יהיו, להגיד ישר אדוני צורי, מלוא אבלתם בו. חצי קדש is on page 144. יתקדל ויתקדל שמי רבה, ואלמד יברא חירותי וימליך מהלכותי, בחיי חול וביום מחול, ובחיי דחול בית ישראל, בעגלה בעגלה, ובזמן קריב, וימרו אמן. יהי שמי רבה מברך, לעולם על מעמיה יתמרך. יתברך וישתבח, ויתפאר ותרומה מנשא, ויתעדה ויתעלה ויתעלל, שמי קודשה בריחו, לעילה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה. תושפחתה ונחמתה, תאמירה מעלמה, ואימרו אמן. We'll turn now to page 146 for the Baruch Hu. יאי נא די נא יאי נא די נא נא page 149 at the very bottom of the page. This is an hour of change. Within it we stand uncertain on the border of light. Shall we draw back or cross over? Where shall our hearts turn? Shall we draw back my brother, my sister, or cross over? This is the hour of change, and within it we stand quietly on the border of light. What lies before us? Shall we draw back, my brother, my sister, or cross over? אהבת עולם בית ישראל עמך אהבתה תורה ומצמור חוקים ומשפטים אותנו למדת על כן אדוני אלוהינו ושוכנו וכוננו נצליח בקוקך ונשמח בדברי תורתך ובמצוותך לעולם בהם 
כי הם חיינו באורך ימינו ובהם נגד יומם ולילה מאבטיך אל תסיר ממנו לעולמים ברוך אתה אדוני אוהב עמו ישראל. שמע ישראל אדוני אלוהינו אדוני אחד. Please join me on page 154. היום על לבביך, ושיננתם לבניך, ודיברת בם, בשבתך, בביתך, ובלכתך, והדרך, ובשוכבך, וקומך, וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, והיו לתותפות מניניך, וכתבתם עמזות ביתך, ובשעריך. למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם, אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם אלוהים, אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אדוני אלוהיכם אמן. We'll turn now together to page 157. Uh, but tonight, let's read together at the bottom of the page instead of the top. In a world torn by violence and pain, a world far from wholeness and peace, give us the courage to say, Adonai, there is one God in heaven and earth. The high heavens declare your glory. May earth reveal your justice and love. From bondage in Egypt, we were delivered. At Sinai, we bound ourselves to your way. Inspired by prophets and instructed by sages, time and again we overcame oppressive forces. Though our failings are many and our faults are great, it has been our glory to bear witness to our God, keeping alive in dark ages your vision of a world redeemed. Let us continue to work for the day when the nations will be one and at peace. Then shall we rejoice as Israel did, singing on the shores of the sea. As we turn to page 158, Oh, oh, oh. 
begin the Amidah on page 164, and then as we always do, we'll continue silently and give everyone a chance to pray at their own pace. Uh, so Cantor Lauren, again, if you'd help us uh, begin on page 164, that would be great. <laughs> Ufi agir, 
thoughts, now turn uh, to those in our lives and those in our community, and certainly those around the world and in Israel in particular, uh, this night who are in need of healing. And uh, in a moment, I'm going to read our Mishaberach list, but I'll invite those at home who have other names that they would like to share. You're more than welcome to share them in the chat. Uh, so tonight we are thinking of Francis Scavoni, Dolores Michka, Estella Gass, Sylvia Orn, Yerachmiel Ben Hinda, Paloma Chauhan, Samuel Moskowitz, Audrey Lubo, Chaim Leib, Robert Posner and Joyce Weinberg, Rick Gold, Stu Pollock, Jane London, Catherine Guarino, Emuna Chava, Raina Walsh, Deirdre Klein, Stephanie Skitt, Judy Stern, Miriam Cornfield, Roz Brody, Hannah Ruth Bat Sara, Marlise Silverberg, Susan Spruce, Fagel Sipura Bat Elisheva, Elisheva Bat Sara, Richard Gambino, Michelle Sawicki, Idol Basha Bat Yitzchak, Tzvi Menachem and Chaim, Rivka Bat Devora, Amy and Gavin Tucker, Janice Kurz, David Dowling, Israel Ben Yitzchak, Ben Sion Ben Moshe, Lorraine Danis, Buddy Kassoff, Shelley Newmark, David Kyle Klotman, Rivka Bat Rachel, Sarah Bat Chana, Moshe Eliezer Ben Sivia, Peretz Ben Yehuda, Leah Mat Naomi. And of course, we are thinking of all those who are suffering from the fighting uh, in Israel right now. Um, and our hearts and our, our minds are with all of those who are suffering. Um, and as we think of those that have been added in the chat as well, we'll turn to Cantor Lauren to help us to sing the Misha Berach tonight again on page 371. Shaberach Avotenu Avraham Yitzchak Ve'yakov Mi Shaberach Imotenu Sara Rivka Lea Ve'rachel May the one who bless our mothers May the one who bless our fathers Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, and bless us as well. Bless us with the power of your healing. Bless us with the power of your hope. May our hearts be filled with understanding and strengthened by the power of your love. Bless us with a vision for tomorrow. Help us to reach out to those in pain. May the warmth of friendship ease our sorrow. Give us courage, give us faith to show the way. Mi shaberach avoteinu, mi shaberach imoteinu. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, and bless us as well. Thank you, Cantor Lauren, and Shabbat Shalom, everyone. So, um, truthfully, I had hoped and prepared and expected to uh, to talk to you tonight about something very wonderful and positive, which is the groundbreaking that's coming up this Sunday and the beginning of our renovation and our building. And, and of course, you know, as wonderful as that is, and we will have that time on Sunday for certain, tonight we need to talk about what's going on in Israel and, and as best as we can to try to find a, a way forward. Um, for those that are members of the community, you might be surprised that you didn't get a letter from me this week on the topic. And it would be a convenient excuse to say that that was because I was uh, helping with a health issue for my mother-in-law, but I think that's really just an excuse. I think the truth is that when I sat down to write, and I did try several times, I didn't, I, I couldn't find words. I could not begin to find words. And what the greatest struggle for me was that I went back and I went to look and to see, you know, what, what did I say before, right? When the last time there was a, a flare up, the last time there was violence in Israel, the last time that that uh, family and relatives were running for their lives and hiding in shelters, the last time that innocent people were being bombed, all of these things, and it was really striking to me. It's not the first time that this happened, not the second time, or the third time, or the fourth time. It's so many times that I realized that I kept saying the same thing. Every letter was basically saying the same thing in a a sort of, you know, uh, a, a hope and uh, and that hope being shattered in so many ways and so many times. 
And you know, as I, I turned 40 this year, and I spent probably more time in Israel than any other place in the entire world, and I've been so engaged in its its history and its current reality and its politics and and all of its culture and everything, um, you know, to see how much is just repeating itself over and over and over again. After 40 years of life, to see the story told over and over again, everything, of course, changes every time. The realities change, the, the devastation changes, the initiators changes, the reaction changes. All of those things may change in some slight variation, but the bottom line is the end is the same. Time goes by, days pass, people are killed, and nothing is resolved. No step is taken, nothing. And then what is most, to be honest with you, troubling to me, one of the most troubling pieces, is that then we all go out there in the world and we begin spitting out whatever it is that our position might be, most likely parroting something that somebody else, perhaps a rabbi told you to say or to think. Um, and in a remarkable fashion, within a matter of hours, to see the Jewish community on its own cannibalizing itself, attacking itself, arguing with itself, friends, family, uh, debating who is right, who is wrong, who has the moral high ground, who is the partner, who is not the partner. And I couldn't help but think, where are all these conversations and the in-between times? Hmm? Where is the engagement on a Tuesday that's just a regular Tuesday, right? Where is the engagement on the day-to-day -day kinds of experiences? Why do we wait until there is devastation to finally seem to pick up our ears and our eyes and care? to have an opinion, to share that opinion so loudly, in fact, that many of our friends and family will cut us off because of what it is that we think and feel. Why is it that we only think in the negative? Why is it that we put our energy, our time, our money into what is a self-defeating prophecy? And one that unfortunately, for those of you who, who study with me in our prophets class week to week, know has happened many times before. It is not a question of blame or responsibility. It is not that simple. Anybody who tries to simplify a conflict that has gone on for as long as this conflict is, is honestly fooling themselves. It can't be simple. At this point, so much time has passed. So many lives have been lost. So many uh, lives have been affected in one form or the other. And so many generations have now been born into a situation like this that we, are, we have nobody to blame in essence but ourselves and each other. And I don't mean that euphemistically, I don't mean that, you know, I mean that quite literally. And I think because, again, we have somehow convinced ourselves that the only time that we ought to or need to engage with Israel is either in one extreme or the other, when there is something truly terrible happening or something that amazing happening. But you know what? There's a lot that happens in the middle, okay? Peace is not made in the extremes. It's made in the day-to-day -day slog. It is made in making bridges. It is made in calling up people what you disagree with. It is made in machloket, in disagreement. And ultimately speaking, it is made in shalom. It is made in shalom and is made in this idea, this foundational idea in our tradition of peace built off of the concept of shalom, of wholeness, of creating a sense of wholeness, not just for an individual or a community or a people or a nation or religion, but the idea that for all of us to exist together, we need to have a sense of security, a sense of hope, a sense of, again, wholeness, of shalom, of peace. So I wanted, of course, to share something with you tonight that's in this vein. And I found something that really was quite remarkable to me. And I just want to share it. It's very short. And it's not going to actually probably say anything entirely new. But I want to share one wrinkle on it that I think is really not, not to be lost. So this comes from a section of the Mishnah that's known as uh, Oktsin. It's about, believe it or not, about fruit trees. Uh, it's about a section of the, the Mishnah that's about purity, about creation of purity. And so this particular teaching comes from Rabbi Shimon ben Halafta, and he says the following. He says, Akadosh Baruch Hu, right, the Holy Blessed One, found that there was no vessel in the world that was strong enough to contain God's blessing for Israel, save for that of shalom, save for that of peace. For as it is written in the Psalms, Adonai will give strength unto his people, Adonai will bless his people with peace. So again, there may not seem like something radical or new here, but it's really quite profound, okay? First of all, Shimon ben Halafta is saying 
that when God created the concept of blessing, and in particular blessing for the people and the children of Israel, for all of us watching this tonight, for all of us around the world, we are of that conversation, right? That when God created blessing for us, the only vessel that could withstand the, the grandeur, the beauty of God's blessing, the only thing that could contain it is peace. Now here's the wrinkle and the thing I think that is not accidental. These words are the last words of the Mishnah. These are the last words of the Mishnah. The last word of the Mishnah is Bishalom. You could say that's an accident. You could say that's just a scribal reality. It's not. It is not an accident. The last word in Judaism is Shalom. Our main responsibility in life is Shalom. And as we are on the precipice of Shavuot, of the holiday in which we celebrate the giving and the receiving of the Torah, we better spend some more time reading it. We better spend some more time committing ourselves to the concepts within it. And yes, I understand. I am not naive. I know the complications of not having a partner to speak with, of a violent organization shooting rockets indiscriminately at ch children and women and men and old people. Those are not the only people. There are other people. There are people on both sides in the West Bank and in Gaza. There are people within the state of Israel. There are all of us. There are many more people who are committed to the idea of peace than to the people who are committed to the idea of war and destruction. And yet we cede the ground to them to speak for us. And unless that changes, unless we unify our purpose, our resources, our finances, our political strength, our communities, unless we mobilize and put the same kind of energy and time day in, day out to supporting those on both sides of the line who are working day in and day out for peace, unless we make that our priority, then it will simply be a matter of time before we are having the same conversation again, before I need to write another letter to the congregation trying to explain what it is that's going on. And at a certain point, I think we have to take a personal responsibility in this conversation. I don't have the power to convince, nor would I want to, anyone to change their political view or their strategic outlook or their sense of their connection to Israel or to the Palestinians. That's not my purpose in speaking tonight. I believe very strongly that we can hold those various ideas in mind, various perspectives, and unify ourselves around this single idea of shalem shalom, of wholeness and of peace. And I think if we can do this, if we can really do this, really commit ourselves to doing it. Us, every community around the world, all of our friends, all of our loved ones in Israel, all of those on the other side of the green line, if we can really find some way to just change the conversation just a little bit, just a little bit, I truly, optimistically, hopefully believe that change is possible. And I hope and I pray, first and foremost, for the lives that have already been lost, for the lives that have been affected, uh, for all of the, the people who have been traumatized, first and foremost, to pray for them. But ultimately speaking, we ought to pray for something beyond just reactionary status. We need to pray also for the strength that it's going to take for us to find peace finally. So let it begin tonight. Let it begin Let's begin with our prayer. And may God hear it and help us to find a way forward. So with that, I wish you all a Shabbat Shalom. I'll uh, invite you now to join me on page 570. My voice doesn't crack to the point where I can't speak. Uh, we will mark the last of our counting of the Omer together as Shavuot is almost upon us on Sunday night. Uh, so again, we'll begin on the top of the page with a intention setter, and you can join with me at home. In any muhan umezuman lekayem mitzvat ase shel sfirat haomer. I am ready to fulfill the mitzvah of counting the omer. Baruch atad onai loeinu melech haolam asher kitchanu b'mitzvotav etzivanu al sfirat haomer. Our praise to you, Adonai, sovereign of all, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to count the omer. 
היום שמונה וארבעים יום שהם שישה שבועות ושישה ימים לעומר. Today is 48 days, which is six weeks and six days of the owner. And together we'll now turn to page 586 at the bottom of the page, Alenu Lashabaya. Alenu Lashabaya, Ladon Hakol, Latet Kedula, Liotzer, Breshit, Shelo Asanu, Kegoyeha Aratzot. Velo sama nu kemishpechot adamam, shelo sama chelkenu kahem, vego raleinu kechol hamonaham, panachnu korim, umishtachavim, umodim lifne mehelech, malche hamlachim, akadosh baruchu. We're now on page 591. Venemar Vehaya Dunai Lemehelech al Kol Haaretz Bayom Hahu Bayom Hahu Yeh Adonai Echad Ushemo 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 Echad now invite those who are in mourning and observing yard sites to please rise in body or spirit as we first mark and remember those who passed in our community in recent months. Miles Ambrose, Morris Dickstein, Fred Eber, Edwin Friedman, Sandra Furman, Evelyn Gelb, Lucy Gladstone, Lois Herr, Phyllis Katz, Jeanette Kopp, Madge Judith Parcher, Steve Popkin, Danielle Lisa Rigg, Geraldine Rosen, Paul Silver, Joan Strong Tangzilius, Virginia Tizer, Marjorie Weinberg Berman, and Ann Weiss. We also mark the art sites that occurred during the last week for Rose Koppelman, Henry Decker, Charles Goldman, Irene Goldman, Lorraine Haber, Robert Jonas, Harold Clapper, Heather Kotler, Ruth Krennick, Dove Kriegsman, Harry Oliphant, Sophie Pearl, Jesse Siegel, Pearl Soroka, Amy Stevens, and Martin Weiss. If you're thinking of anyone else uh, this evening who you are remembering and you feel comfortable, you're more than welcome to add their names to the chat. Uh, and I'll invite those who are in mourning to join with me on page 598 as we recite together the mourners' kach. It kadal v'it kadash shemei rabba be'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayichon v'yom echon v'chayi d'chol beit Yisrael v'aralav v'zman kariv v'imru amen. Yehe Shemei Rabba Mevarach Le'alam Le'almei Almaya. Yit Barach V'yishtabach V'yit Pa'ar V'yit Ramam V'yit Naseh V'yit Adar V'yit Alev V'yit Halal Shemei Dekudsha Berichu. Le'ila Minko Birchata V'shirata Tush Bechata V'nechem Ata Da'amiran Be'alma V'yimru Amen. Yehe Shalom Rabba Min Shemaya V'chayim Alenu V'al Kol Yisrael V'yimru Amen. Ose Shalom V'imramav Hu Yase Shalom Alinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Zichronam livracha, may every one of their memories be for a blessing. If you're still standing at home, you can be seated. And uh, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, I know a heavy sermon tonight, so it's a bit of a challenging transition sometimes to our announcements. But as I've mentioned in years past, the announcements are really the life and blood of this congregation. Right, everything on this piece of paper shows us what it is that we are indeed committed to and what our values are about. So I'm going to tell you and actually some very wonderful and exciting things that are coming up. And we can be in two places at once. We can have a, a heavy heart for the sadnesses of the world, and we can have a joyful heart to celebrate the goodness. And Judaism expects us to be able to hold both of these things in the same time. Challenging as it may be, this is where we are. So pay close attention because tonight there are some very important announcements. The first is, please join us for Shabbat services streamed tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Uh, all the usual streaming options are available to you. And then join us for Torah study at 12 o'clock on Zoom. Uh, this Sunday morning, as I hope you all know, we are celebrating a very exciting moment in our history, in our present, in our future, and uh, in marking a groundbreaking ceremony, albeit one that is limited uh, in that I wish every single one of us could be physically present. Uh, but one that is being uh, is crafted and created by dedicated people to try to to really give us a chance to celebrate this monumental experience that we are all on the verge of uh, of crossing over the threshold together. 
Um, and so it will be streamed live, as I said, 1030. We're going to turn the streaming equipment on probably even before that, just to make sure that everything is working well. You can watch it on our website, on YouTube, on Facebook, whatever it is, please, please, please try and be there. There will be a recording of it. It'll be available another time, but it really is, uh, it's a remarkable thing. It's a really, really remarkable thing. Uh, and I will just say in advance that if there is any technological problem, it's your rabbi's fault. So blame nobody else other than myself, but I just tested it. It worked very well. I think we're in good shape. I hope. Pray for us. Uh, just a reminder again, no need to register, nothing. Just turn on the screen. You should be able to hear it, see it. It should be really, really wonderful. As I mentioned before, on Sunday night, we are going to mark as the sun sets, the beginning of the holiday, the festival of Shavuot, the holiday that commemorates the giving and the receiving of the Torah. Uh, that evening on Sunday night at 7.30, I think it may be listed in some places at 8 o'clock, but it's 7.30. Uh, myself and my dear friend and colleague and cross-town rabbi, Rabbi Josh Franklin of the Jewish Center of East Hampton, uh, the Hamptons uh, is going to join me and I'm going to join him and we're going to teach uh, something actually challenging. And, and I appreciate Rabbi Josh coming up with the idea, taking troubling Jewish texts and trying to understand them. Um, so I may have put myself in the firing line, uh, which maybe wasn't such a smart thing, but I happen to believe that our tradition teaches us that we ought to engage in the tough stuff. So uh, both Rabbi Josh and myself will each teach for about a half hour, give or take, uh, and we'll be able to begin the process of Shavuot with the beautiful Tikkun Leil Shavuot. Uh, and again, this year, I would just say, um, after you're done studying with us, my guess is that a million different places will be available to you online all throughout the night. So it's a great night to learn Torah. Go spread your wings, okay? You have the rabbi's permission. Go learn with as many rabbis as you can. Bring back what you learn. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So please, please, please do it. Monday morning, we will also have a streamed uh, Shavuot festival service. That service, just as a reminder, includes the service of Yizkor, the service of remembrance as well, and that will be streamed as usual on May 17th, um, sorry, Monday morning, whenever Monday morning might be. Uh, this week, my classes will return to their regular schedule. Again, my appreciation to my students for being so understanding this week. Uh, so that Prophets class is on Wednesday and my Sidur class on Friday mornings. Uh, also, a reminder that this Thursday at four o'clock, uh, we have our last event in our Veritable Menches series uh, with a film on Carl uh, Lamel and a QA with the filmmaker afterwards. So anybody who's already registered, you're going to get a link to watch the film at your leisure whenever you want to between now and Thursday, and then show up on Thursday for a discussion of the QA with the uh, film's creator. Uh, and again, that's Thursday at four o'clock. Um, and uh, okay, now here's the real key. This is the big announcement. Thanks very much to our friends at the Cor Maria Retreat just down the street here in Sag Harbor on Bay Street. They have made their outdoor space available to us for the end of May and the beginning of June. And so we are going to have an outdoor service that will be available beginning next Friday. Now here's the important piece, okay? The outdoor service will be at six o'clock. There will still be a Zoom service also at 7.30 as well. So nobody is left out in the cold. You can choose to come to one or to other or both. In my case, I don't have a choice. I'll be there in both cases. Just know that Cantor Lauren is finally getting a well-deserved weekend off, so she won't be with us for the first week, but we'll continue, as I said, through the end of May and through June, and we're figuring out other alternatives, but that's just the only time that they can give us for this particular space. But we've got it all figured out. I figured out the speakers. I figured out the, all the stuff. You just have to bring yourselves. Now, here's the key. You must register ahead of time for contact tracing for all those things that are important. It's just a matter of making sure that we know who's there and who's coming and how to contact them. God forbid something should happen. A reminder that even though I know things are changing day to day on the safety side, we're still gonna require masks for everyone. We're still gonna be separated. Just follow the instructions of the ushers. You'll have a great time. But please, uh, if you can bring a chair from home or a uh, you know picnic blanket, whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, and just a heads up, there is no available bathroom there. Okay, so please plan accordingly as best as you can. Uh, and so again, services will be outside, weather permitting six o'clock, end of May, June, and perhaps in the future, but for right now, just May and June. And there will always be, again, the Zoom component at 7.30 uh, as well, so that nobody is left out and the services will be roughly identical. And you may even see a face that you haven't seen in a while. I'm not promising anything, but we'll see. Uh, we're, we're getting ourselves back to that place, people. Uh, but we're going to do it thoughtfully. 
We're going to do it smartly. We're going to do it safely. Uh, and we will be back together sooner than, than not. So just keep an eye out. You're going to get an email uh, about it this week. Just one other note, um, especially as we're just trying it out uh, at the beginning, we're going to hold back and just keep it for uh, you know members of Temple Adis Israel and closest family for the first couple of weeks in May. And the hope is then, then we would be allowed uh, to have guests to join us in June as well. But in order to make sure that our community who has been so remarkable and and connected through all of these months, we want to make sure that the first opportunity goes to, to our membership. And then we hope we can get back to what we used to do very, very well, which is also welcoming in the stranger, welcoming in the guest, welcoming in people who are visiting town, sharing what Otis Israel is all about with others. Uh, we'll get there. But those first couple of weeks in May, let's uh, let's try as best as we can to keep it to our, our immediate family, as it were. And then we'll go from there. So uh, I think those are all of my announcements. The last one's the big one. Um, and so I'm very uh, excited now to welcome back uh, Cantor Lauren. Um, and I think uh, I'm now forgetting. Cantor Lauren, we do a closing song and then Kiddush, right? A little mivubal, as they say in Hebrew. A little off in that. So uh, Cantor, how can, we, how can we end our service tonight? Uh, we're going to end with a song and a prayer for peace. Oh, say shalom im Roma. Shalom aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael ve'imru imru amen. Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael. Yase shalom, yase shalom. Shalom Aleinu Me'al Kol Yisrael And I'll welcome you at home. If you have a Kiddush cup handy, please join me. We're on page 123. Maruch HaTadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Mohorei Perihi HaGahafen Baruch HaTadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher ki chanu mitzvota veratza bahanu veshabahat kotcho biavahu bratzon in chilahanu zikaron le mahase vereheshit ki hoyahom techila le mikrae kodesh zechelitziahat mitzrahim ki vahanu vachartam veotahanu ki dashtam Mikol hamim veshabahat kochecha veahavahu ratzon in chaltanu baruch atadonai mekadesh hashabat amen. Shabbat shalom, everyone, and we'll say a good night to our students.